Hi everybody, I hope you had a great long weekend. We are going to be doing three math lessons this week and then we are done with math for the school year. So that's really exciting. Um, today we get to do an activity with a broken calculator <laughs> and I'll tell you all about it here in just a minute. But first of all, let's pretend that you have a calculator, and if you do, then you can get one out. If you don't, you actually don't really need one for this activity. But let's pretend that you have a calculator, and we're going to try to make the number 12 on a calculator. So think about ways you could do that. One way would obviously be to type the number 12 into the calculator, right? So that's easy, but what else can we do to make 12? In fact, we can pretend that we are using those name collection boxes we learned about a long time ago, and we can come up with different number sentences that could make 12. So for example, one really easy way to make 12, or to make any number, would be to take the number that is one less, and write that down, and then to add 1 to it. So for 12, we would say 11 plus 1 equals. So I could actually try out that number sentence on my calculator and see if it works. So 11 plus 1 equals. Oh, look, it makes 12. OK, let's see if we can make an even longer number sentence that says the same thing. For example, I could use lots of the same number to get up to 12. So 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 equals 12. I can test that out on my calculator. If you don't have a calculator, that's okay. You can still test it out because your brain works in much the same way. Your brain can solve that problem too. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Plus two equals 12. We can also use subtraction to create a number sentence that would get us to 12. Think of what a subtraction sentence could be. That means we have to start with a number that's bigger than 12 and subtract something from it to be able to get to 12. I know that 15 is bigger than 12, so I'll write that down minus, let's see, I have to count backwards to get to 12. So 15, 14, 13, 12. Okay, so 3 equals, so a uh, subtraction number sentence I could do would be 15 minus 3. And again, I can test that out on my calculator to make sure it's true. 15 minus 3 equals, and it's 12. Okay, we're going to make this a little bit more complicated. I said we're going to be working with a broken calculator. Again, you don't actually need a calculator or a broken calculator to do this at all. We're going to be using our brains. Okay, let's say I have this calculator and it's broken. One of the keys is broken and it's the number 4. If I press 4, nothing happens. So all the other keys work but not the 4. My teacher asked me to make the number 14 on the calculator. Well, how can I do that if my 4 isn't working? 14 has a 4 in it. Guess what? We can use all those things we just talked about when we were making the number 12, and we can get to 14 without actually typing in 14. How would you get to 14? without typing it in. Here are a few ways that I could get to 14, and maybe you came up with plenty of other different ways than what I have, because there's lots of ways we can make 14. I came up with a couple simple addition sentences, 9 plus 5, 12 plus 2, 20 minus 6 would get us to 14. Look, none of these have the number 4 in them, right? Because our 4 key was broken. So the goal is to make 14 without using the 4 key. You can also do a much longer number sentence. You can break those numbers up. Like, um, say you wanted to use 9 plus 5. You could also break up 9 even further and break up 5 even further. You might get something like this. 3 plus 2 plus 5 plus 1 plus 3 
Well, 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. 11 plus 3 equals 14. And if you wanted to test all those out on a calculator, you definitely could. But like I said, you don't need one for this activity. So today in our math journal, we're going to be looking at a page that has broken calculator number puzzles. So if you can get out your math journal and open the page 194, it looks like this. It says... Use plus and minus to solve the broken calculator puzzles. Use a calculator to check your answers. Now again, if you don't have one, that's okay. But most phones or iPads or computers have a calculator built into them if you, if you really do want to use one and you don't have a regular calculator at home. Okay, number one says, imagine your one key is broken. Write at least three ways to show 11 without using the one key. So that's exactly what we were just practicing. How can you use addition and subtraction? Maybe you could even write a really long number sentence to make 11, but no ones. You can't put any ones in your calculator. Number two says, imagine that your two key is broken. Write at least three ways to show 20 without using the two key. So in these spaces, you're going to have to write small because you might be writing really long number sentences, but try to use addition and subtraction to make these numbers. Number three says, imagine that your four key is broken. Write at least three ways to show 34 without using the four key. Okay, so our numbers are getting bigger, and we can't use the four key here on number three. Number four says, write your own puzzle. Give it to your partner to solve. This is a fun one because you get to pick which number on the calculator is broken. And you're going to write a little puzzle and have someone else in your house solve it. So pick your number and then tell them what number they need to make. Maybe it's 23, maybe it's 12, maybe it's 53. It could be any number. I would suggest not going over 100 though. And have someone else tell you how they would make that number without using the one number key on the calculator and see if you can challenge that person. You are going to post a picture of page 194 on Seesaw today. You're also going to do a page of math boxes, and that's the page right before 194. It's the page 193. I'm going to read these to you, and you are going to follow along, or you can do them on your own. Number one says, use two triangles to make a new shape. Draw it here. Use your pattern block template. Now you don't have a pattern block template. The pattern block template is the little green stencil thing that we have at school. You don't have one of those at home. So you get to draw triangles just however you want. But it says to use two triangles to make a new shape. So you're going to draw them here in this space. And then tell, is it a polygon? Yes or no? Remember, a polygon has to have straight sides. All the sides have to connect, and it can have as many sides as you want. Number two, draw a polygon with four sides that are the same length. Four sides that are the same length. Hmm, I wonder what we would call that polygon. Four sides that are the same length. Number three says, circle all the names for the colored region. Now here, the circle is divided up into four pieces. Two of them are colored. We want to know, what do we call this blue part? Would we call it one-fourth, one of two equal pieces, one-half, or whole? So um, there may be more than one answer since they said circle all the names. So you have to decide. 
Number four says, how many equal pieces are there in each shape? Okay, so here in this shape, how many equal pieces? Here in this shape, how many equal pieces? And then it says, color one of the smaller pieces. So whichever shape has smaller pieces, you're going to only color one of those pieces. So one shape won't have any color on it. Another shape will have one of the pieces colored. I hope that makes sense. Number five says, you have 70 cents. You buy a pen for 40 cents. How much do you have left? Then you're going to write a number model. This is a lot like what we did the other day when we were playing store. If you buy something at the store, you're probably going to get change because you, you gave too much money to the cashier. So you want to know how much money you would get back if you had 70 cents and you subtract 40 cents because that's how much you're paying for that pen. Please write a number sentence down here that shows the math that you did to get to your answer. Number six says find the rule. So they don't give you the rule, but they do give you all the in and all the out numbers. That's so nice. So if a three goes in and an 11 comes out, what did we change the three by? First of all, did it go up or down? Are we adding or subtracting? Second of all, what are we adding or subtracting by? Then it says, write a true equation to check the rule. So they're asking you to use this rule, whatever you end up putting here in this box. You're going to use it down here. So let's say that you're, you ended up putting plus 6 here in this box. They want you to test this out. Does 9 plus 6 equal 17? No, it doesn't. So that means the rule can't be plus 6. Whatever the rule is, you're just going to write it down here. This first line is for your plus or minus. The second line is for the number. So you'll end up putting plus or minus something here, and then plus or minus something here. Okay, I hope that makes sense. All right, so today you're posting pictures of pages 190 4 and 193 on Seesaw to show that you did your broken calculator activity and one page of math boxes. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.